Good morning and uh, welcome to Prophet Prophetic Ministry with George Dello. And I don't know whether I'm on Facebook Live as well as Free Conference Call as we in, uh, are celebrating Palm Sunday today when Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem and uh, was ready to go to the cross to die for us so that we could be saved. Amen. God bless all of you, and uh, before we get into the Word this morning, we're going to be talking about the cross and the blood, and uh, what it's all about. And uh, for that, we want to ask God to uh, just come and send His Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us into the Word so that it can produce the fruits of His kingdom in our lives. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, as we are coming upon Passover to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on our behalf to provide the atoning blood for us. We thank you, Father God, for everything Jesus did on that cross. We thank you for your goodness, the land of a living, your abundant grace you poured upon us, your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you, Father, for your word and your spirit, whereby you reveal yourself to us and, and uh, allow us to come to know you in a practical way and enter in uh, through that saving work into an intimate personal relationship with you. Father, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit whom you have sent to be our helper, to be our teacher. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, right now that you will come and break open the bread of the word, that you will reveal Christ in a greater way, that you will give us a better understanding of what the blood of Christ does for us as the children of God. We we ask you, Holy Spirit, to break open the bread of the word, to open the eyes for understanding, and uh, give us the faith to receive the word as it is, not the word of men, but as in truth, the word of God that works effectively in those who believe. We declare today, Lord God, we believe and therefore we receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, thank you again. This is uh, George Della with Powerful Today Prophetic Ministries. And, uh, Coming to you this morning from Toronto, Ohio, and uh, again, I uh, uh, just want to remind you that uh, this Sunday is Palm Sunday. Next Sunday will be uh, Easter, and uh, we celebrate the Passover of Christ who came and gave his life for us, and uh, to that end, I want to uh, just uh, talk to you this morning about the cross and the blood and what that blood represents, what it means to us as Christians, what God has done for us through his word, uh, through that work of Christ on the cross of Calvary as a sacrificial lamb, and uh, how we can enjoy those benefits. I want to begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. It tells us in this uh, passage, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. See, this is the very uh, essential of Christianity. The message of Christ is the message of the cross. That's why Paul talked about he, how he preached Christ and him crucified. They, they preached the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ because that's what uh, our salvation is all based upon. The message of Christ is the message of the cross. And it's through the cross that Jesus destroyed Satan and redeemed mankind from the power of sin and death. Uh, that's where our victory is. That's where our salvation is. That's where our deliverance, our healing is. Everything that God has done for us is because of the cross of Jesus Christ and what was accomplished on that cross. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, tells us, inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So the cross represents the death of Christ. The power of the cross is comes through the shed blood of Christ. Okay? Through his blood shed on the cross, Jesus obtained for us, for every believer, 
eternal redemption, which is available for all mankind, for all that will that will repent and put their faith in what Jesus did for us. Every one of us can obtain that eternal salvation, that eternal redemption, because of the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So when we celebrate Passover, we celebrate the work of Christ that was accomplished for us through his death, burial, and resurrection, and what that work means to us. The power of the cross was to save us to the uttermost, to save us, our spirit, soul, and body, the fullness of his redemptive work, and to deliver us from the bondage of the fear of death, deliver us from the power of Satan. Uh, all of this was accomplished through Christ's death on the cross of Calvary tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7, but into the second part, talking about the, the, uh, uh, the tabernacle, he says, but into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. Verse 12 of Hebrews 9, he tells us, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He, Jesus, entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So under the old covenant, under the law, when they built the tabernacle of Moses, the priest would have to take blood of animals every year, and he would offer it for himself and for the people's sins that were committed in ignorance. He would go into the Holy of Holies and uh, offer up that blood as a sacrifice for the sin of himself and the people. But here in Hebrews 9, 12, he tells us that Jesus, he went into the Holy of Holies, not the, the tabernacle of the wilderness. He went to the Holy of Holies of the tabernacle in heaven. And he didn't take the blood of bulls and goats. And he took his own blood and entered into the holy place once for all in order to obtain an eternal uh, redemption for us. Redemption of Christ is eternal. It is forever. It accomplishes everything that God uh, came to do in order to save us and to make us his own special people. Now, prior to Christ, the priest had to continually offer sacrifice year after year, and, and uh, uh, every day they would offer sacrifice to God. But, but every year on the Day of Atonement, they would come together and offer this blood in the Holy of Holies to atone for sin. But the problem was, the, the reason that they had to continually offer these sacrifices year after year, day after day, was because the blood of animals could never actually take away the sin of the people. But Jesus, when he came, he offered his own blood. He offered himself as a sacrifice, which was once and for all. Its effects, the effects of his shed blood are everlasting. He only had to make one offering. It was finished. He didn't have to go back uh, day after day. He had to go back year after year and to offer a sacrifice because his sacrifice was better, better than the blood of bulls and goats. His sacrifice was an eternal sacrifice. The blood of Christ was sufficient to do away with sin once and for all so that no further sacrifices are needed. When Christ said it is finished, his work of redemption was forever accomplished for everybody who will partake of it, who will put their faith in Jesus Christ and receive that redemptive work for themselves. Now, that word redeem means to ransom, to set free. It means to rescue by paying a price. The whole purpose of his blood was to free us from the bondage of sin. It, it means to convert into something of value, to, to set free as a, redem a, a ransom slave. The redemption of Christ encompasses our reconciliation to God. It means our adoption as his children. It provides our release from the curse of law. It brings about our purification from the defilement of sin. And it gives us an e inheritance of eternal life. It is our deliverance from Satan and the power of sin. It is our sanctification to holiness. It is our victory over sin, over the devil, over the flesh, 
and over the world. The cross of Christ has restored for us everything that was lost in the Garden of Eden, and it is through the blood of Christ that we are able to obtain the abundant life of Christ to show forth the glory of God upon this earth. Everything to do with our redemption is based on the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Notice what Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In other words, Peter here is, is, is giving us a little insight about what that means, that word redemption means, where he talks about to rescue by paying a price. In other words, to pay for our deliverance, our freedom from the bondage of sin. So Peter is telling us that we're not redeemed with corruptible things, gold and silver, all your money, all of your works, anything that you can do, anything that this earth provides cannot redeem you from sin. It cannot redeem you from that aimless conduct that was passed down from our forefathers through the, the, the corrupted seed of Adam. But we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. In other words, we are redeemed with something that is so precious, so valuable, that it can actually produce this redeeming work by changing us into a new creation, by changing us, uh, uh, delivering us from the power of sin, from the, 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 the conduct of sin against God, and make us into a new creation. Because Jesus came as a lamb without blemish, without spot, in order to do that work. The shedding of his blood was the fulfillment of everything that Jesus came to do. It was the accomplishment of redemption for all of mankind. For whosoever will come and, and partake of this work of Christ by faith in what he came to do. And by freeing us from sin and all that sin accomplishes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, we are now free to live a life of righteousness in all pleasing to God. We are free to fulfill the purpose of God as his witnesses proclaiming his marvelous work. Now, why is it that the blood of Christ is so valuable? Well, in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, notice what he tells us. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood, it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. The redemptive power of the blood is due to the life in that blood. Remember, the wage of sin is death. The only thing that can satisfy the demands of sin is the shedding of blood by the taking of life. And the value of that blood corresponds to the value of the life that is in it. The value of an animal's life is less than that of man. And the value of Christ's life is greater than anything in creation. Because he came as the Son of God. He came and took upon flesh. And he became holy man and holy God. Amen. And that's what makes his blood so valuable because the life of Christ is in that blood. It gives the blood the power. So if the blood of animals could atone for the sin of man under the old covenant, how much more can the blood of Christ, the Holy Son of God, redeem us from the power of all sin? It was through his death, burial, and resurrection that that, that we have been reconciled to God. And, 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 and Jesus has become for us righteousness or justification. He has become for us our sanctification and redemption. And because of these, we also have our consecration to God and our victory over sin, Satan, and death. So let's look at these things. Let's look at what we have obtained 
because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, because of his redeeming work through his death, burial, and resurrection, and uh, what we have obtained on behalf of what Jesus did for us. So the first thing he tells us is, is reconcile, reconciliation. We are reconciled back to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Notice what Paul tells us in, first, in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. For it pleased the Father that in him, in Christ, all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Jesus Christ, through that blood that was shed on the cross, has reconciled everything in heaven and everything on earth back to God. That word reconcile means to restore the relationship between God and man, which was broken by the sin of Adam and Eve. It is the atoning work of the blood shed on the cross which produces that reconciliation. It restores our peace between us and God. Remember, when Adam sinned against God, he broke that relationship, and our peace was broken because of it. We were, made, we were brought into enmity. There was enmity between us and God. But now, through the blood of Christ, we are reconciled back to God, and peace is restored and we now have right relationship with God. The next thing that we have through the blood of Christ is our justification. In Romans chapter 5, verse 9, he says, Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ that we are justified. We have been delivered from sin and its power, and we are transformed into a new creation with a new nature, having been made the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. We now have a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit, and we have the indwelling Holy Spirit because we've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are made righteous. We are restored to God. And everything that God desired to do to make us his own, his own special people has been accomplished through this justifying work by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Now, not only are we reconciled to God and justified to God, but we are also sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12, he says, Therefore, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Okay? He was taken to, to Calvary to be put upon that cross and suffer on our behalf in order that he might sanctify us. That word sanctify literally means to make holy. Remember what the Bible tells us, without holiness, nobody shall see the Lord. It is holiness that produces a, a eternal life within us. And the only way we can be sanctified and made holy is through the blood of Christ that has been shed for us. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13 and 14, he explains what that means. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. In other words, under the old covenant, he's telling us that if the blood of bulls and goats could produce this sanctifying work. And again, we have to understand that under the old covenant, it wasn't an actual work. It was a positional sanctification, but it allowed uh, God's people to, to come near to God uh, through the shed blood of animals. Their, their sin was covered under the old covenant. But then he tells us how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. In other words, if the blood of animals could bring about a sanctifying work that would allow God to make him uh, Israel his own special people and to dwell uh, in that tabernacle among the people of Israel, how much more 
with the blood of Christ who brought an eternal uh, redemption, who, 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 who brings an actual experiential uh, justification for us. How much more will that blood cleanse our conscience? In other words, make us holy in a real and practical way and actually deliver us from all sin, body, soul, and spirit to give us pure hearts and make us holy unto God in a real and practical way so that now we can serve the living God in holiness. Sanctification purifies us from the very defilement of sin to make us holy and acceptable to God. That's why in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27, Paul tells us this, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. In other words, Paul's telling us that uh, Jesus Christ loved us to the place that he died on the cross. He gave his very life for us. And why did he do that? That he might sanctify, that he might make us holy, cleansing us with the washing of water by the word in order that he might present the church, us, to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. You see, this was really the whole purpose of the death of Christ, why he came as a sacrificial lamb in order to die for us. The whole purpose was to do what the law could not do, to do what the blood of, 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 of animals could not do for us. And that was to make us holy in a real and practical way, to actually purify us from all sin, to remove the sin from our hearts, to, to cleanse our bodies, and our souls from all that sin so that we can be holy without blemish. And that when uh, Jesus comes, he can present us to himself a glorious church with no spots or wrinkles or any such thing, we would be holy in his sight. Another thing that we have through the blood of Christ is our redemption. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Paul said this, In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the remission of sins, according to the riches of his grace. You see, when man... A sin, he was sold into bondage, becoming a slave of sin. Jesus tells us that anyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. And the wages of that sin is death. Becoming a slave of sin leads to death. But through the redemption of Jesus Christ, because of his blood that was shed on the heart on the cross of Calvary, we are delivered from the bondage of sin and death. Jesus paid the price to ransom us through his death on the cross. That remission of sins is more than just forgiveness. It is the actual deliverance from sin and deliverance from the power of sin. It is liberty from that sin. Jesus came to set us free completely from not just uh, uh, the, the defilement of sin, but from sin itself. He came to cleanse us wholly and completely in a real and practical way because the blood of Christ is all efficacious to make us totally free from sin and its power. Now, Jesus' blood not only delivers us from all these negative things and gives us the positives of righteousness and makes us into a new creation, but he also produces a consecration a devotion to God. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14, Paul tells us this, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works. In other words, the purpose of purifying us was to make us God's people to do what? To serve him, to become his priests to do, uh, carry on the works of Christ and share this gospel with others, to, to, to bring others to Christ, uh, to God through the blood of Christ, through sharing this gospel of Jesus Christ. He purifies us so that we can serve him in holiness. 
that we can be a people that are fully devoted to him, having been bought with a price whereby we no longer live for ourselves. We live for the one who died for us. We, we, we live to glorify God in our bodies and our spirits. We live in total devotion to him to serve God and to please him, to live a life of worship to God, live a life to glorify God in all of our ways. And we can only do that as we are purified from sin, as we are sanctified and redeemed and justified and reconciled to God, as all of these things that Jesus came to do through his shed blood on the cross would be accomplished in us. The church comes into union with Christ after it is without spot or blemish, after it is holy. We are only truly useful to the master after we are cleansed and then sanctified to him to do his will. Amen. Paul talks in Timothy how we are uh, sanctified in order to serve the master, to please him, and to fulfill his work, uh, will and purpose by becoming his servants and carrying out the works of Christ. A holy people are a people who are united to God in a relationship of love and are faithful to that relationship. A holy people are a people who love God sincerely, fervently, wholeheartedly, and constantly. And then one other thing I want to share with you is what the blood of Christ did for us, and that is to bring us victory. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, he says, They overcame him by the blood of a lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. They overcame him, Satan, by the blood of a lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. The blood of Christ includes our victory over Satan. When Satan brought about the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, he became the prince over this world, having received the authority that man abdicated through his fall. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, he tells us, in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of the death, that is the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of a devil. He came to destroy his work and his power over those that will receive the work of Christ. Through his blood, he sets us free from all sin and thereby releases us from the power of Satan. When that blood is applied to our flesh, there is no longer any place found in us for Satan, and he is cast down. We have overcome him by the blood of a lamb. The door of access is shut, and he cannot touch us. When our hearts are purified by the blood of Jesus Christ, when he washes our body, soul, and spirit by his blood, he removes everything that Satan has over us. First John chapter 5, verse 18, John said this, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. The same way that Satan could find nothing in Satan, he can find nothing in us. When we are truly born again of God and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ, there's nothing in us that allows him to uh, come against us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Paul said this, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. As we celebrate this Passover, let us do it in remembrance of all that has been accomplished for us through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. We have been saved. We have been reconciled. We have been brought back into relationship with the living God. We have been justified and made righteous. We have been sanctified, freed from sin and his power. We have been redeemed from the bondage of sin and Satan. We have been consecrated to glorify God in our bodies and spirits. And we have the victory over sin, death, and the devil. 
through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can reign in this life and e enjoy eternal life with God in the life to come. Praise God. What a wonderful salvation we have through the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you rejoice with me? Can you just thank God right now for everything he has done because of the death, birth, and resurrection of Christ, because of that blood that was shed for you and for me? Can you rejoice right now and give God thanks for what he has accomplished for us because of the shed blood of Jesus? Father, right now, I just want to thank you for the work of Christ. I thank you for his willingness to come and lay down his life for me, for the church, for all those that will accept his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. I thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for everything that has been accomplished for me to make me into a new creation, to deliver me from sin, to give me victory, and allow me to live a life that is pleasing to you. I can serve you. I can be devoted to you. And I can glorify you in this life. And one day, praise God, I'm going to enjoy that eternal life with you in heaven forever and ever. Praise God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, right now, I pray that those that don't know you, those that have not embraced the full work of Jesus Christ and this blood, I pray, Lord God, that you would draw them, that you would convict them, that you would reveal them to them what has been accomplished through the cross of Christ, what has been accomplished for them by this blood that was shed for us. I pray, oh God, that you would open the eyes of their understanding, that you would break through the, the blindness of their hearts, and that, Father God, you would draw them and bring them to the revelation of what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us, and that you would save their souls and bring them into the kingdom of God as a newborn child of God in Jesus' name. And Father God, I want to pray for all of those that are suffering in their bodies or minds, that are, that are sick or uh, being uh, 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 just the oppression of the enemy coming against them. I want to thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ gives us victory, not only victory over sin, but victory over sickness and disease, victory over the works of Satan, victory over the curse of the law right now in Jesus' name. I, I cast down every spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, death, and destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast down all sickness. I declare right now you are redeemed from the curse of law by the, by the blood of Jesus. You have been uh, uh, delivered from the power of sin and sickness in Jesus' name. I declare to you that Jesus Christ bore your sickness on the cross of Calvary in his body, that by his stripes you are healed. I proclaim the name of God, Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you right now. I speak life and healing into your body, your mind. I declare you free from every oppression of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus Christ heals you right now. Rise up in health and soundness in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I want to thank you for being with me today. Would you share this video uh, uh, so others can, can see and hear the word of God today and celebrate with us this, this, uh, uh, this, this Palm Sunday as we are coming up on Passover and to celebrate everything that's been accomplished for us through Jesus Christ. Would you share this with them? And uh, let me encourage you, go back, listen to this again. It'll be on Facebook Live. It'll be on YouTube. And uh, write down the scriptures and get a greater revelation so that you can begin to walk in this victory. You can begin to walk in this holy life and, and uh, live a life that glorifies God. Amen. I want to thank you again. This is George Dello, Power of Today Prophetic Ministries. Thank you for being with me, with me. And I want to encourage you right now, keep looking up because your redemption draws nigh. We are one day closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something, it's time to be ready. It's time to embrace the full work of Christ because the signs are all around us is coming is near.
So God bless you. I love you and appreciate you. Have a blessed Lord's Day. And uh, I'll be back Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, and next Sunday at 9 a.m. So join with me and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.